Welcome to the Reality Revolution. I'm your host, Brian Scott, and this is dedicated to all those spirits out there who believe life is meant to be magical and fun. Here we venture to share the very mysteries of self and reality. My purpose is to help light that spark inside of you, to reawaken your sense of fascination and awe towards the world. I'm going to try to help you hack reality and unleash your potential and open unlimited possibilities of wealth, health, and relationships in your life. Welcome to the Reality Revolution. Like anybody that loves Vadim Zeland's writing, when I heard that a new book had been released, I ran to Amazon and ordered it. It was not available on Kindle. The new book is The Priestess It Fat. Not The Priestess Tufti or Tufti The Priestess. It's called The Priestess It Fat. I had no idea what I was getting. It implied when I had read about it that it's like the second in a series of books about the Tufti the Priestess, which is a wonderful book. And I've had several episodes about that particular book. Vadim Zeland is a very good writer. I am. This channel is not exclusively about Vadim Zeland. I promise we will, we will be covering a bunch of topics and I already have it just recently I've been going through a series where I'm doing deep dives and I'm talking about Zeeland's writing in particular in the future we'll be covering all kinds of different stuff and I'm going to have n- new interviews coming soon and all kinds of cool stuff but this particular book is very fascinating we were all taken off guard a little bit when Many of us had read this 800-page book, Reality Transurfing, which is a wonderful book, and I'm still doing deep dives on it. There's a lot of great information in that book. And then, of course, everybody said, oh, Tufti the Priestess is out, expecting to get a book that was similar in nature to Reality Transurfing. And when Tufti came out, it was completely different. The narration was different. As at a minimum, you have to admit he's a very good writer. So something similar has happened now. And as an avid reader of all books, somebody, I mean, there are a few people you probably know that have read as much as I have. Uh, that when I got this in the mail on Saturday and I opened it up immediately, it's got a picture of Tufti on the front. I opened it up immediately and was, okay, this doesn't look right. And I know that a few of you out there that are listening may have had the same circumstance an unusual book it appears to be a fictional book and it looks like I can't it, it I wouldn't even want to be able to read it uh, just directly I, I need to discuss it uh, this these chapters will require deep dives and interestingly there's not even chapters there's sections I have gone over the beginnings of this And as I've done in other episodes, sometimes it's fun to do a deep dive on some of these topics. When he says this is more powerful than Tufti the Priestess, that this helps you understand the concepts of it, well, certainly I'm interested to see if we can expand our knowledge of reality creation, and Vadim Zeeland is on the leading edge of that. So I wanted to, in this episode, do a reading of the beginning of this book and get an idea of what exactly this is going to be. I have suspicions and I will share them with you as I read this, but I wanted to read this with those of you that maybe don't have the book that want to know what everybody's talking about. So the book does have an opening introduction and it just says Tufti the Priestess. Meet the new world sensation. It is Tufti. Why is it that nothing seems to work out the way you want it to, even though you act according to your own free will. You might think that the reason why nothing is working out the way you want is because that's just how life is. But the real reason things don't work out the way you want them to is because you aren't acting according to your own free will. You are being directed by a script. Another reason things don't work out the way people want them to is because they do not know how to take the right action to shape events 
the way they want. Rather than composing the reality of the upcoming film role, they tend to battle with the reality they face in the current frame. Reality exists only in the here and now, and what is real is real only to the extent that it has taken place in the material world. You cannot change what has already happened, yet when you fight with your current reality, that is exactly what you are doing. Because everything that surrounds you consists of something that has already happened. If you want to change the script, you must wake up and come alive inside the movie. There is another section that says from an interview with Vadim Zeeland, and in quotations it says, The Priestess Itfat is an artistic version of the book Tufti the Priestess which reveals even deeper and more powerful techniques than those of trans surfing. You will read about the amazing adventures of Tufti and her friends in meta-reality. You will be able to get to know Tufti more closely and learn how the priestess applies her techniques in practice. Trans surfing can be considered as an elementary school and Tufti as a higher. This is the aerobatics of managing reality. So this is the aerobatics of managing reality. So the first chapter is called Stop Time. It happened a very long time ago. About 100 million years ago. The exact date is unknown, but it does not matter. When it comes to events whose remoteness is impossible to imagine, it becomes unimportant whether it was long ago or recently. Looking at the stars, we do not think about the fact that their light has flown to us for millions of years. Stars, they are just here and now. Similarly, with the events of the past, even those that have been lost in the depths of millennia, they seem to be here and now, as soon as they emerge in memory or narration. True, not quite here. Where does this depth of millennia extend? Land and sea deepens down. The sky is blowing up. And in what direction does time take? And where does it come from? Everything is clear with space. It moves forward and remains behind. Over time, everything is also simple. If you do not think about it, what was, gone, what will be, will come. But where did what happened yesterday go? And where does what come tomorrow come from? One has only to begin to understand what such a time is, as it turns out that everything is not easy and nothing is clear. After all, if you can't say where you went yesterday and where tomorrow will come from, then maybe there are none at all. But only today, now. Yesterday no longer exists. Tomorrow does not exist yet. It turns out that time is nothing that moves nowhere out of nowhere. Is it a convention? Or is it a physical phenomenon? Well, the future, as an integral part of time, is an ephemeral concept. However, the past is quite real, and not only because excavations testify to it, shards and remains 
are rather an obsolete present. The past is understood as a series of events. Where are the events stored? It may seem incredible, but the past can be seen firsthand. The starry sky is a clear confirmation of this. Stars light up, shine, go out, and we see it no matter how long it has been. In the same way, from the side of the stars, you can see what happened on Earth millions of years ago. So the past is stored in a ray of light. And only? Let us leave all these puzzles to the philosophers. There are unexplained things in the world that you can only talk about. So, one of these things happened. Time froze. And the world stopped. Until the moment everything was as usual. Gave way to a dynasty of kings. For one civilization followed by another. Statues of forgotten gods were covered with cracks. And pushes sand. Everything that exists. When it comes and goes. But never stood still. Although, who knows, it is possible that this happened more than once. Time stopped, and the universe froze in limbo. After all, if there is a reason why time has set in motion, then there may also be a reason for stopping. Such pause could have lasted either a moment or an entire eternity, since without movement there is no time. So, in that very endless moment of non-being, when nothing happened, something was happening in one place. Priestess Itfat wandered through the endless desert, talking to herself. This was a very extravagant person. It is not clear from what country, era, or even what age, maybe 20, maybe 40 years, wearing a long dress to toe and dark, blue, almost black velvet with a cervical collar studded with diamonds. On the left hand, a ring with a crystal of the same dark blue glare. The face is covered with a frightening ritual coloring with a crimson color with white spots on the cheekbones. The eyes are green and the hair is black, cut in a square. What else can I add? For all of her brutal appearance, she was beautiful. Why she could move in a frozen reality remained a mystery, including for herself. Since the priestess did not know where she was and did not remember how she found herself here. O oh gods, rulers of the world, bring me home. Did not lament, but rather Itfat was rather capricious. Where are my servants, my subjects? If you don't show up right now, I command you all to cut off their heads. Well, this was said perhaps with exaggeration, since the priestess did not at all have a reputation as a cruel and bloodthirsty ruler. So, if this is someone's evil joke, everyone will be very, very bad. Itfat was quite tired, but she still had the courage to behave like a capricious princess in such the circumstances. Admittedly, the priestess had a brave heart. Who else, if there had been in her place, I would have fallen into a fit or trance. Moreover, the landscape was surreal and frightening. Everywhere uniform sand waves to the horizon. There is not the slightest blow in the air. Neither hot 
nor cold. The sky, in which there was no sun, shone with a yellow radiance. while the sand, on the contrary, was blue. Come on, lively, lively, we think. Is this a nightmare, horror, or a terrible nightmare? It fat had a habit of repeating words. Nothing of the kind can happen to me. It is I who create nightmares and horrors that make everyone tremble. Last warning, if I immediately right now do not end up in my temple, I will begin to get angry, and you know how scary it is. It fat fell to her knees in desperation. No, I'm probably going to cry now. And then she suddenly realized that she had hardly remembered where she was from or who she was. The head confused, vague snatches of memory that she was a high priestess, a, a ruler. The country, it was a temple s- servant's, her mentor, but the details are not given. The priestess could not even remember her name. Oh, gods, tell me who I am. After these words, a whisper suddenly appeared from the void which began to rush from side to side like the wind. It fat, it fat, priestess, it fat, priestess, priestess. It's strange. It's kind of like my name, but it's not kind of not mine. The priestess muttered, looking around for a voice, a source. Who is there? The vestibule. The vestibule whispered a whisper. The threshold of what? Time. Time. Where are you? Show yourself. But the whisper just suddenly died down and no longer responded. So, it fat sighed, not waiting for an answer. Looks like it's, uh, it was a nightmare. Either I wake up right now or I'll lose my mind. I can't stand it anymore. Then she remembered what her mentor taught her. To return from a dream to reality, you need to realize who you are, who you really are. I, it's not me, the priestess proclaimed. I am me. But the spell did not help. Nothing happened. But who am I? And what could it happen if she did not clearly remember herself? And even the name that the whisper called seemed to her, as it were, and not quite by her name. And what does it mean? Not really. Well, what are we going to do, Itfat? The priestess asked herself. Okay, my name is Itfat. My name is Itfat. What's next? It is useless to go somewhere, everywhere. There is only sand. And nothing but sand to the horizon. Wait, wait. What else did the mentor say? A new memory aroused hope in her. You need to wake up in a dream. And then it will be possible to control the dream itself. To do this, you need to carefully look at what surrounds you and think about whether everything is in order or something is wrong and what exactly. See the reality. No, everything is wrong with me and with me. Everything is out of order. And what can be seen here except for sand? By the way, why... Is he blue? It fat sat down and began to pour it from hand to hand. Sand is not sand. Sand is sand. She said, trying to see the unusual essence of ordinary things as the mentor taught. What is unusual in it except for color? It consists of grains of sand and pores as befits the sand. 
At the same moment, the sand before the priestess begun to heave, curling up into a huge funnel and rushing towards the sky. The sight was terrifying, and the priestess screamed to run away from the funnel, but everything was in vain. Wherever she ran, a sand whirlwind appeared before her all the time, and in shoes in which Itfat was shod, you won't especially run. Stumbled, she fell. Mad despair had almost taken possession of the priestess, but she again gathered her courage and calmed down a bit, since the funnel did no harm to her. Okay, okay, I'm already scared so that nowhere else, if there's nowhere else, it's already good, it's better, but I'm tired of it. My fear is now separate, and I am separate. I don't want to be with him anymore. I'm leaving, and I leave fear in my shoes. They are still useless here, away, away from me. She threw off her shoes and threw them right into the funnel. That's it. I left, but I left my fear. Shoes disappeared into a whirlwind, but it spun even more, now with an increasing roar. Things are bad, Itfat thought it was necessary to take that. Something more effective, otherwise, good, it it is over. Well, Itfat, Itfat the priestess, is the priestess. You need to see this damn reality. Understand what it is. Or you need a cover. It is not just sand. It is not just a whirlwind. What is it? Consider it already quickly. Quickly, already soon quickly. And then it dawned on her. Hourglass, she exclaimed. It's an hourglass. I see you, you diabolical reality. At that moment, the rotation of the vortex stopped. The rumble gave way to a glass chime, and a giant funnel crumbled to the ground. The sand acquired its natural yellow color, and the sky shone with blue. Only the sun was still out in the sky. Section 2, Chapter 2, Synthetic Virgo At the same time, but in a different era and in another place. The explanation of why this is possible at the same time, but in a different era, leave for later. The movement in space and time does not always occur linearly, that is, within the limits of visibility and understanding. If that it is beyond our understanding, it does not mean that this cannot be. In order to move from the point in space and time where we left Priestess Itfat to a new place of action, the observer would need to make a rather intricate journey. Imagine you fly away to the sky. The Itfat figure in the sand turns to a point. The earth moves away and becomes more and more like a geographical map, and you are carried away higher, and now the blue of the sky is replaced by the blackness of space. Now you're flying in a black void, but it's not dark around because the stars and the earth are still visible as a receding blue ball. But soon the earth is turning into a point, which makes the movement no longer noticeable at all. For some, the moment you hang out in this position when the range of stars in black and nothing but the stars then one star suddenly turns into a pipe. It pulls you into a luminous tunnel and carries you through it infinitely long, but incredibly swiftly. Finally, the speed slows down. You are pushed out of the pipe, and you again hang in the black space with the stars. One of them begins to increase, and you understand that you are not hanging but moving. And now the star turns into a ball, which gradually grows in front of you in a blue planet that is again the Earth, but in a different era. You enter the atmosphere around the black is replaced by blue. You are drowning in clouds, which while floating in a gray mist and then plunged into darkness because the sun had set. Below are the lights of the night city, and you plan down closer to the lights. Fly's motorway 
with moving vehicles, area with walking people, rivers, bridges, glowing blocks, houses, and finally fly into a window. Now we can safely say that at the same time but in a different era in another place, namely in one theater, there were filming of the musical The Aughty Clown. Why a clown and what does he mean? Frozen in church because dead? Or maybe the inveterate in the sense of frantic finished incorrigible? It seems that the film crew itself did not really understand this because it was still in the so-called creative search. The auditorium was immersed in twilight. On the chairs were left things and outerwear. Several people were sitting in the hall. Someone was dozing and someone was looking at the illuminated scene where people scurried around with all kinds of preparations. The scene was a transformer in the form of a half cylinder on the floor and walls of which images and light effects were projected. In the middle of the stage was a director, an emotional guy, and cursed terribly. This is no good. You are all good for nothing. Are we filming a musical or a funeral? Get out, fools. Everyone went out and come back others. What he wanted to say by this, and what others they were supposed to return to, the director did not explain. But the crew members, a motley crowd, dressed to the nines and did not ask who ran away to where. So where is my diva? Only she inspires me. Bring me Marvel. Max, is she there for a long time? He turned to the operator. Go find out. He ran backstage and quickly returned. Max stuttering young man as his manner was preparing for a long time before saying how or phrase victor we we sh- what we who we are or what we are is a complex philosophical question in short matilda is acting up again max finally said so let's get her here victor shouted had seen another part of the universe it's very interesting So, from what I could tell, the whirlwind at first when I thought when when, uh, throws the shoe of fear into the whirlwind, which turns out to be an hourglass of time. So, my interpretation is she's trying to wake up in reality. It's a pretty straightforward beginning, very much like in Tufti the Priestess, which the concept is when you wake up in reality you can choose your own script I didn't quite get the meaning of the blue sand and there was no sun that was mentioned so it fat has woken up in this place and is talking to someone there's a voice that's coming in through the blankness and so of course I'm very interested to find out the next part goes into a play where somebody kind of frails the person in the play but I'm not quite sure how I can do a deep dive on this. What I might do is is just read through the rest of it and then try to do my best summary. But I don't know if I can do that because it looks to me like you can pick puzzles out of different passages. And so this might be something that's a personal book that you literally have to read and you gain knowledge of as you go. And I'm very interested to see if this is something that actually... Uh, can teach us beyond what we learn in Tufti the Priestess. So, but anyways, I do think this has potential and I will continue to see what else I can pull from it. Stay tuned. Going to do a deep dive soon on the next chapter in Reality Transurfing that I was going to cover, which I believe is chapter 9. The heart and mind is a huge episode coming up. And we got all kinds of new meditations coming and interviews. Super excited about uh, some deep dives on a new book. And there's so many more things that are coming. Very interested to see what you guys out there think about the Priestess It Fat. And if anybody out there that's watching this video or listening to this podcast has read the book completely 
as I've tried to do, and I have gotten a little bit farther than what I've talked about, I would really love to have a discussion of this book. And if anybody wants to, we can have a full interview. I would love to have a group talk of people that have actually read this book. I want to pull out all the secrets. I do believe that Zealand is aligned with very unique knowledge. And I want to pull, like I do with every writer, I want to pull as much knowledge as I can possibly get. But this particular edition may be incredibly difficult to get the knowledge that we need. That is my first impression, and I can't wait to learn more about this unusual book. Please leave your comments if you've read the book or what you think about this passage or any particular passages. The more we can comment on this video, the more we can learn. I think we can all share our knowledge on this, and I would love to know what you think all episodes of the reality revolution can be found at therealityrevolution.com for coaching go to advancedsuccessinstitute.com email me at media at advancedsuccessinstitute.com keep an eye out for a new episode on chapter 9 of reality drone surfing and new meditations and all kinds of new stuff coming it's going to be wonderful Welcome to the Reality Revolution.